Thank you, Akim. As you can see, our technical support today will be Akim Komenich, and you will easily find the people responsible for the technical things. But on the beginning, dear friends, I would like to wish you war, war welcome in my personal name and, of course, in the name of all of us from Handball for All project. We plan to hang out in a different environment today, but as you can see, life is an unpredictable journey. Uh, once again, uh, I must say big thanks for everything you have bring to the project in the last nine years. It was a pleasure sharing time with you on Copaonic and Clado. Uh, all of us together, lecturers, people from the staff, coaches, promoters and guests, we built the name of this project and made it a special place for handball lovers from all over the world, which I'm extremely proud of. The webinars in front of us are just a small wish, a way to compensate you somehow for all you gave. And I hope that we will continue our project next year when these problems stay behind us. On the end, I wish you good health and best of luck in the next season, whenever it starts. And here we are in the beginning of this special digital edition. The role of one who will start was accepted by our today's guest, Nenad Shortage from Croatia. It is not, definitely not easy to present him in a few words. EHF Master Coach, IHF Traveling Coach and EHF Academic Master Coach, currently the head coach of Croatian female national team and the head coach of Lokomotiva Zagreb. He spent all his playing career in club, what we know today is PPD Zagreb. And during his long and successful coaching career, he coached national teams and clubs from Croatia, Jordan, China, Emirates, etc. As a lecturer, he led the coaching courses in Turkey, Finland, Greece, Thailand, and of course, he participated in 2018 edition of Handball for All Academy and was planned to be with us this year. I will leave you now to the Nenad. Enjoy the lecture and please send all your questions to Akim and to me in our inbox. Neno, floor is yours. Well, welcome to all the friends all over the world. I can say that I'm honored to talk with you once again. Oh, I'm sorry that we are not together in Kladovo but hopefully we'll do it next year. What I'm going to talk today, what is my topic is uh, very simple, it's called why do I love Humble? Uh, I will start from, from the basic from the beginning. Uh, I was lucky that uh, I had, as a teacher, as a coaches, all the best creation coaches and teachers at that time. And uh, that they teach me that to be a coach is not only somebody who will develop the body of the players, but somebody who will develop the mind of the players. And that if you are going to do this job, a co job of a coach, then you have to do it with all your heart or don't do it at all. If you will do it on 50%, don't do it at all because this is not a job. Uh, what I'm proud of that in my handle career as a coach, I was working with hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of the players, and uh, most of them, they have very successful academic careers as professors, as a doctor, as a, as a master's. And it makes, me, it makes me extremely proud because that means that I, I leave some path behind me. I leave a trace behind me, not only, not only as, as somebody, as I told you, that is developed, the, the muscles and uh, to make results, but somebody who is, has extremely important, extremely important role in their developing as a human beings. Uh, put it this way, I was talking today with, with Akim and I said, uh, when you're talking about the work with the young players, then uh, you as a coach, in the eyes of the young players and the beginners, you're the most important person 
a part of the, of the parents. In, in his or her home, young player shows all, all their possibilities, capabilities to be good, to be bad, to be like this, left and right. But when she come to the training, or when he come to the training, they're trying to impress you, you as a coach. They're trying to be the best that they can, to be the fastest that they can, to do everything what you tell them. And I'm sure, and I'm sure that all of you, as I know, you know the name of your first coach. That means that our role as a coach is, is extremely important in education and in life of the young players. Okay, I can, we can start. Let's go to the introduction part. I will just put in a few few basic things about the handball that will show you how handball is important in today's world. Uh, according to some of, of the papers, nowadays you have more than 27 million of handball players all over the world. Uh, second most popular sport in Europe, only in Germany now, I have some uh, updated numbers. Now it's more than 760. Thousand players, and they have the aim to be over the 800,000. What is important when we are talking about the Germany numbers is that more than 300,000 players are younger than 18 years. International Health Federation established 1946, and today has 199 members, more than the United Nations. European Health Federation established in 1991. Now we have about 50 members, 50 member federation. Let's go, Akim. And I'm trying now to explain you, explain you why do I love handball, what I'm, what I see in handball, because uh, people like, like Dragon, people like, like Akim and all of you that are now here, we are not living only off handball, we are living for handball. For us, this is the way of life. So, in my uh, high school days, I was playing handball and football at the same time. And somehow, it comes that one day, I have two games at the same time, and I, I decided to play handball and never again play football. Maybe I will have more financially, maybe I will be somehow more satisfied, but for sure, I will never change my path, because I really love the sport, and I really love this, what I'm doing. When we are talking about handball, we are talking about the post-structural complex kinetological sport. Sport when two teams are playing in the field 40-20, and the main objective, of course, is a scoring goal and to prevent opponent from scoring goal. When we are talking about physical part, we are talking about aerobic and anaerobic sport, and sport characterized with the high variability of biomechanical parameters. It is extremely important to, to say that only in handball, you will say, we will see all the basic human movements that, that we have, that is running, jumping, falling, and rolling. Let's go, Akim. This part is something what is, for me, the most important. Handball, it's in high correlation with human intelligence. It is uh, normal, uh, one of the most important coaches in this part of Europe, Vinko Kandia, once said that uh, you have to be very, very intelligent to play handball, that handball is not for the average one. Sometimes I, I accept it, sometimes I'm not so sure, but so it is sure that you have a correlation with intelligence and that if you are not able to understand what the coach wants from you, you are, pardon, you are not able to understand how you are going to, to make some of the moves, then you cannot play handball. Furthermore, it benefits on regulation of certain personality traits like self-domination, self-control, aggressiveness, frustration, tolerance, and fulfill almost all the aspects of human motivation from biological to social one. Uh, what I want to see, what I want to, to say by this is that uh, 
handball for me it's uh, life handball for me it's life 40 on 20 and when you are playing handball starting from social aspects you are learning how to live as a part of the group you are learning how to work inside of this group you are learning a friendship you are learning about <coughs> cooperation you are learning about how you are helping your friend when he has a trouble and all of this and all of this according to the rules according to the rules of handball inside 40 14 20. Uh, you're learning that uh, sometimes you will do all all the best that you can and you will have no results sometimes you will do nothing basically nothing and you will have the result it's all life that is why i like handball because life for me is the other picture uh, handball is for me the other picture of life the other thing what we are talking about is uh, how to develop all the psychomotor abilities handball is only one the only sport when you are making the training that you are developing all the big muscle groups all the muscle group you are developing during the training of handball all the other their focuses on one two maybe four groups but when you're working with handball it's all the <coughs> muscle groups that you are developing let's go Akim. then as the next part of this what we need to talk about is uh, that handball is developing from day to day handball it's a it's a live organism that is developing from day to day that evaluate from day to day and uh, of course in the segments of technique and tactic as well it is important to say that when we develop defense or some kind of tactical actions in defense in the same time it press us as a coaches to start to think about how can we play in attack against this new defense one way is pressing the other one way is trying to to make the other the better defense is trying to make the attack the better and the opposite way when we train tactical elements we are training the technical elements as well and if you don't have the technical skills then uh, to train a tactical part it's pure imagination it's science fiction without all the technical elements that you need to do starting from individual starting from group at the end collective to be a part of uh, somehow tactics without technique you cannot do it of course we can do it and we have to do it in each section of course we can we have to be very very careful of course we have to stop during the training and we have to to point to the mistakes that our players are making and let them teach to do it the right way don't forget that to optimize one movement you need approximately 3000 3000 repetitions if you do it the wrong way you need 3000 more three times more so you know how many time you will lose if you don't press player to to tell them this is your mistake do it the better way do it this way it's our job it's our job and we have to do it uh, the other part of uh, so called high level handball level, level when we are talking about something that is competitive uh, we are talking about strategy and tactique a lot of lot of coaches unfortunately they don't know the difference between the strategy and tactique and i'm really sorry about this to explain once again strategy is a plan and deliberated approach to handball match that means you have to watch a lot of a lot of videos you have to see a lot of things and then according to the probable reaction of the opposing team players you have to decide what is your so-called plan a plan a and how you will start the game what are the players that will start the game what part what defense you will start how you will attack the opponent team but of course uh, you cannot play this what you do it as a strategy if you don't understand tactique tactique is the 
how you will react in a second, in, in a few seconds, when the opposite team starts to play the way you didn't expect. They are playing the opposite of the <coughs> games that you were watching on the video. So then the tactic is decisive, and then you have to, to be very quick. Your mind has to work very, very fast, and you have to make the idea what and how to do. You have to have, in this position, plan B, plan C, also pull whatever you want. Sometimes even, I do it in, in, in my career, sometimes I even move some, some moves that uh, I didn't train. But at the end, it comes that they were good. Strategy and tactics works together. One we are the, without the other, it's not successful. This is the way it should be. Let's go. Of course, when we are talking about this analysis before the matches, I just want you, I, you know most of these things or all of these things, but I just want to remember, uh, remind you what and how we are preparing for the match and put in this way to understand from, from one part to another. Uh, Decision-making on how your team will play in a game on a tournament is extremely complex task for the coaches and depends, as I, you can see, many factors. But what I want to do is, uh, some of you, or most of you, you have been the coaches of the national teams and uh, playing the big championships. And you know what does it mean uh, to play a big championship? That means that during the championship, world championship, European, Asian, any other championship, coaches just like uh, analysts, just like uh, physiotherapists or doctors, are sleeping just a few hours during all the championship, a few hours a day. We have so much job, we are so exhausted during the championship, we are so focused to the game or to the <coughs> next opponent that basically you're just going from one game to another. You have to forget in the same moment when the game is finished, you have to forget the game and you have to focus on the other one, you have to start the analyze of the other one and it's of course, it's take almost every time, all, all the night, talking about the game, talking without your, your people in the technical staff, it is extremely important. This kind of analysis, especially in nowadays when you will see that most of the top level teams and most of the top level national teams, they have, ex they have very, very, very big technical staff consists of maybe 12, 14, 14 people down there. So what we have to, Look, when we are going to make analyze before the match, we should know, of course, basic characteristics of our team players. Starting from anthropometrical, then motoric abilities, fitness, into what shape we are. Of course, we should know the handball skills, we should know the abilities, cognitive abilities of, of our player and our motivation. You know, I can... no, Of course, Psycho social characteristics are the most important one. I will go back of this social characteristics and just uh, to give you to give you one story. Uh, 1972 national team of ex Yugoslavia was uh, Olympic winners in Munich. Uh, the best shooter at that time in the world was a player called Zlatko Zagmistar here from Zagreb. But what is more important that he didn't be, he wasn't a part of the national team during the Olympic Games. Why? During the old preparations, they all know that uh, Jacques Mishter is some kind of ego, egomaniac, some kind of, of, of the player that thinking only about himself. So that makes extremely easy social, socialist paper to talk to. Do you want to sleep with this one? Do you want to play with him? Which one you are going to give the ball during the game? Which one do you think that should shoot the last shoot and so on? Uh, when they get uh, feedback, they can see that not one of, of the players in the national team, no one of them didn't want to be in the same room with the Zlatko Zagmester, didn't want to give him the last ball, and they didn't have a good opinion about him. Because of this, he was out of national team. National team won the Olympic Games without him. What I want to say, it's very simple. 
it is important to have a team. It is important that all the team have heart only and brain only on, on one aim. How we as a team will accept, not who will be the best scorer, not who will be the best player during the championship, but how we as a team, we are going to make the result. Of course, we have, no, we have to know the characteristics of the opposing team players, their style of playing, and to be honest to yourself, what is the real value of your team? Your strength, your weakness, when you're comparing this to the opponent team? What do you expect? Please back, I can my finish. What do you expect during the games? What, can, what variation or changes you can expect? And maybe the most important time, the time that you have, the time you have to learn and master the certain time of playing that you want to make during the attack and defense. Let's go. And I like a little handball because it's beautiful, because it's fast and unpredictable. That handball is beautiful, we will all say yes. Handball is fast, yes. But as much as this handball is unpredictable, even in the top level, you can see that, for instance, in the Champions, Champions League, two top level teams, when they are playing in, in seven days, one team will win with 10 goals on one side. Next week, they, next week they, they are going to lose with the 10 goals. I can never forget the game between Kielce and Westerham, Final Four Champions League. 15 minutes before the end, it was 10 goals difference for Westerham and Kielce uh, won, won the Champions League. Same thing happens 2013, when the Croatian national team needs to beat uh, the Poland national team, the host of the European Championship, to beat them more than 11 goals to qualify for the final five to the uh, semi-finals. It was an unbelievable game and Croatian team beat it with 13 or 14, I don't know anymore. The game is unpredictable because the human being is unpredictable. The second one, what I'm talking about is to be a top level player, top level athlete, you need to have three things. You need to have technical and tactical knowledge on the top level, once again, starting from the individual, going to the group and collective. You have to be physical in total, in best possible shape. And you have to be very strong mentally. If you don't have one of these three, you're only average player. Because what, what is used, if you have tactical and technical knowledge, you have physical preparation, but mentally you are not able to achieve the result. What is the use? If you are mentally good, you have technical, technical knowledge, but physically you are zero. And the third combination, you have physical preparation, you have mental preparation, but you don't have tactic, you don't have technique. If you miss all three, each one of the, you are just average player and nothing more. And that is what, what I like in handball. To be all, all. You have to be complete athlete to be top level. Let's go, Akim. And uh, one of the things that uh, for me important in handball, it's uh, not one of the things, but what is important that handball is full of contradictions. First contradiction, talent is important but hard work prevailed. I know a lot of talented players I knew, and I know they, they are not so keen on working and they didn't develop or they are, they are not developing their skills. So they will always be, let us say, average players. On the other side, I know a lot of players, they didn't have so big talent, but they are working very, very hard. And nowadays we can call them the top level players. The other thing, the other contradiction, Individual qualities are the most important one. But one player can never be the team. You can be the best player in the world. You can score 16 goals, 20 goals. If you don't have the players around you, if you don't have your family around you in the field 40, 20, that is going to help you during each of every game, part of the game, 
you will never beat the, the opposing team. The best, one of the best trying to show them, you have, I don't know, you can have Omeyero on the goal, he can, he can save 30 balls, 40, I don't know, that's to, to be, to over-exaggerate, but if the team is not, so if he is the only one, if the team is not together with him, you're never going to, to win the game. And uh, something what we are talking always about, we are talking about this, what I call sport intelligence, uh, is uh, that there's a difference between player and player because top level players, they always make the best decision for the team in a small space and a short period of time. That means if he will shoot, if he will pass the ball, if he will make a feint, if he is going uh, to give a long pass or short pass, this is something that makes difference between player and player. How do you react in a small space and in a short period of time and how you are making the best decision for your team? Not for yourself, for your team. Let's go, Hakim. Same, same thing, same, let us say, contradiction. Handball, when you are looking at this model of handball, that said that the most important uh, physical ability for the handball is strength. On the other side, you will see that strength is not everything. Because you will find a lot of so-called short players, not only on the position of the wings, but on the position of, of the back players and shooters, and we will see it during the video presentation, that they are top-level players and they are much, much better than somebody who is over two meters. For me, handball is beautiful because uh, it's full of continuous movement. Uh, I like when something happens during the game. On the other side, I, I really think that one of the worst things that happens to us when we're talking about the beauty of the handball, to be honest, not about the tactics. I'm talking now about the beauty of the handball is uh, playing seven on six. When you are playing seven on six, that means usually three black players are standing, two pivots are standing, two wings are standing. There are no actions. The ball is just passing slowly here and then, and the attack is waiting for the mistake of the fence. I think the beauty of handball is in all these movements, in all these combinations, in all this tactical, how I will tactically beat the opponent team, the opponent, the opponent coach. The other thing that I think that is important and that is future of, of the handball, especially in defense, it's anticipation of the opponent team movements and ideas. Uh, when you're talking about the men handball, Mostly, mostly, we have we have some difference of courses. Mostly, it depends on on strength and how they are going to play one on one. How they will stop them and kill them. Uh, I will show you now the some of, some of the actions of the French women national team during the European Championship 2018 to see how they can play how they can play handball in defense by making the press on the one side, but to to have a lot of anticipation on the other side and to score a lot of goals from the fast breaks. During this championship, French national team, from anticipation, from cutting the ball, so-called cutting the ball, they scored more than 60 goals. For me, this is somehow maybe the future of playing in defense, to do it, press on the other side, to make it some kind of anticipation on the other side. And uh, of course, this is what I'm always and always and always emphasizing, Imagination and skills. Imagination and skills, they make the difference. Don't teach the players, don't, don't teach them to be, uh, I don't know, computers. Don't teach them to, to play only one way. Develop their imagination, develop their skills, and that is going to make the difference. This is the most important part, because at the end of the day, in the end of the game, only individual skill, it's something that make difference between two equal teams. Let's go. We are going now to the first, to show this imagination and skills. On a period, I can go back. Go back on the first, yeah, this one. Imagination and skills, let's start. Samal, I can please. Stop it now. 
What I want to say now, I, we are going to, to give you a few video clips. What I want to you to do is only to enjoy, to enjoy to see how handball is beautiful, how imagination and skills are important, and what are the players able to do, what you will never expect. Let's go. Repeat it once more, please. And now stop. Uh, please look at this section. I am uh, in handball altogether more than more than fifty, more than forty years. Believe me, never, never. This is the only time in my life that I see the action like this. You will see how Andy Schmidt, one of our guests that will be at the end of, of this seminar, how he is passing the ball to the people. What is what skills he have? And what an imagination he had. Believe me, I didn't see it in 40 years of my life. Let's go. Let's go again. I can two more times, please. Look at the Andy Schmidt. The way how he's passing the ball, what he's doing. Unbelievable. Okay, let's go to the next one. Leave, 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 leave this one more time. This one, in this clip, we are talking about Timur Dibirov. Uh, and one of the things that are very important today in, in handball is that uh, wing players, Wing players today, they have uh, extremely good technique of the shooting. They have to be extremely fast, uh, extremely good jumping abilities. But at the same time, they have to be able to realize the action from the position of the back player. And they, they have to be able to do it uh, even as a playmakers. Now you have two actions from Timur Dibirov. One is this from Rislav Lok, and the other one is playing in, in Skopje. Same in the Champions League, how he shoot and oh, how he play with the pivot when he comes to the position of the back player. Let's go. Look at it again. See, Vardar Vesprem, reaction, the bit of his wing, starting to be a playmaker and his imagination, his skill, how to pass the ball to the <laughs> pivot. Uh, what we want to do here, this is what I'm saying, strength is not, not everything. See, last 10 seconds game, Vardar Barcelona in semifinals of the Champions League. Uh, it was zero, and the game was decided by a shoot of Lukas Indric, the guy is 180. But what is more important, when you're looking at this clip, please, Look when the ball is on the opposite side and how he's, he's putting his hand up. He is asking for the ball. He is asking to, to be the one who is going to decide it. That means that mentally he is extremely, extremely, extremely uh, fit. And on the other side, once again, this section shows what I'm talking about, that this constant, constant and constant continuous movement of the player. Let's go. And again, I can please. Look at his hand now, one more time. Look at now. <clears throat> now, he's asking, he's asking for the ball. Give me this ball, I want to do it. I will take the responsibility. You know, as a coach, is that when you have a player like this, that you are blessed. Because most of them, they're going just to pass the ball and say, okay, I'm not guilty. Let's go. 
Now we are talking about continuous movement in defense. When we are talking about defense, uh, you know, we are talking about uh, three basic things that we are talking about the depth of defense. We are talking about the that defense has to cover all the field in front of the goal. And of course, the density of defense. The most one, the most one important is the density. And you are doing this by movement all of the players. Now you will see games Seged and uh, Barcelona, the movements of the players in defense, they are all helping each other. At the end, they cut the ball. Look at the movement of the players in defense, all of them. They're just pressing the team in the attack to make the mistake. By movements, by movements, by movements. And finally, Soriando take the ball. This is what we are talking about. This is continuous movement in the attack. Today, it's extremely important in handball that all of the top level teams, they are making combinations of few tactical movements where they're making a good, attack, a good attack. And if you're doing just one, it's not good enough. We will repeat this two or three times. You will see that here, Skien from Denmark, they're starting with crossing playmaker with, with the pivot then the crossing with one back, then crossing with the other back, and then the left back is shooting without contact. Important thing is that they're all attacking the same defensive player, number four in defense. Look at him. At the end, he cannot move anymore, and the player is free. Same thing, we have Chambéry, in France, look at their movements. First is running in of the wing, continues with one cross, continuing with the second cross, and then give the ball to the pilot. Putting three technical or tactical movements in one action. And this is what we are talking about, that I think that the future of playing in defense in handball should be this, that you are going to make a press on one side and on the other side, you are going to, to do it more with anticipation. Uh, especially we will stop in, in one action game with Montenegro when you will see that the movement of the player press, press the player just to give the long ball and to let them cut the ball. Now we will show this. Start attacking and then stop it. And you see, in this position, the player number five in defense, or two from, from the right side, he's still here with the pivot. So the player with the ball is without the options, but only to give the ball to, to the right back. And now you can see the reaction forward. Let's go. Hakim. And look now, reaction and taking the ball. We'll see more during this clip. They're doing the same playing with Serbia. They're doing the same playing with Denmark and with Netherlands only from the other side. That means they're not doing this only with the weak teams, they're doing this with the top level teams. Now with Sweden.
game, same actions what the Montenegro was doing, and they are cutting the ball. Game, same from the other side. This is so-called offensive, offensive defense, transformation defense, when you start in 6-0, but you are not almost never in 6-0, you always transform in 5-1, even in 4-2, sometimes even in 3-3. The most important thing is that the player in defense is always focused to the ball, not to the player focusing on the ball. See now in Netherlands, the same thing. Okay, okay, let's go. Uh, one, of the, one of the contradictions is the goalkeeper. As we said, always goalkeeper is a half of the team, even sometimes even more. But <laughs> It is more important sometimes when he saves the ball than how many balls he saved. We can do it, we can see it in the last championship with Croatian national team goalkeeper Marin Shego against Germany and then against Norway saves only three or four balls. But he saves all the ball in the most important minutes and seconds of the game. Don't forget that uh, at the end when they make statistic, cumulative statistic that Croatian national team goalkeeper was number 13 or number 14 by the statistics, by the saved balls in the same time Croatia was playing finals and lose with Spain with two goals only. Uh, my way of thinking is always a way that you can see this last sentence here that was said by Greg Popovich, attack win the game, defense win the championship. Why I'm talking about this, I'm always as most of the coaches, I like to say that the game for me starts from defense, not only because defense is going to give you the chance to score the goal from the fast break, so-called easy goal. It is more important that strong defense will give you the way, the possibility that you can play free in attack. And when you are playing free in attack, then you can give your best movements. When you are afraid in attack, when you know that if you don't score the goal that you are going to lose the game, then the player always has his angle, always is doing the same, the same thing, and then it's much, much easier for defense. That part, this mental part, that defense is going to give you the freedom of playing in attack, for me, is the most important. Now we are going to give you a clip just to show you a few, few of the reactions of the goalkeepers and you'll see how different they react, how different styles they have, uh, but the only, the only aim, the only goal is always the, the same. Save the goal. Let's go. Okay, okay, let's go forward. As we start from, from defense and attack, now we can talk about the transition. And of course, three basic parts of handball game, you know, all of you, defense, transition, and attack. And, and the attack philosophy of the game in the last few years become become a little bit different. Let's go, I can, most of the team start to base their game of counter-attack or the fast break as we want to go and a quick throw off. Thanks to this way of playing, no national team has grown up as from the average team to the team that is constantly fighting for the medals. And they build the whole philosophy of their way of playing in attack by using mostly fast break and quick throw off. Uh, what is important to say for the Norway national team is uh, that a uh, long time ago, they, long time, I said, approximately 10 years ago, 
they start with this project and because they were able that they have a good woman national team and men they're, they're not doing anything uh, by talking by discussing by doing a lot of things they come to they, they understand that if you're going to play the way that all the other teams are playing that they don't have enough quality players to do this so they have to do something new something unexpected so they start with this time they decided to play the game by having a lot of fast breaks having a lot of fast rows when they start the first championship they have average of five or six fast breaks or fast rows during the game that the maximum that they had during one game is in was in the world championship a game against japan and they have most more than 20 fast breaks and the fast throws and this makes uh, the other thing important it makes the important thing how you always select the players because of this philosophy because of this way of playing that is developing from day to day we should somehow incorporate what what kind of players we want the players that are able to in the, the that in full speed in full speed pass the ball catch the ball and there is full speed sport able to do the best possible reaction for the team and the opposite thing is that because of this way of playing it's important the transition in defense or so running back uh, we have to do it with our players and this is more and more important because if your team is not physically able to do this you have no chance with the top level teams no way no way at all you don't have it one more important thing if you are going to decide that you will try with your team to play faster off it's to teach them to learn them that uh, they don't they don't think about the goal you get this doesn't exist they have to immediately to think how they can score the goal and how to to focus them on the other side you have to cut this negative way of thinking oh i get the goal and put the positive okay now i can score the goal put it positively let them forget about the action that happens that you cannot change let them focus to the action that you are going to make you to make a good chance now we'll show two two ways of playing by norway national team we are going to play fast throw off let's go Hakim. You see now we are talking about top level teams all of them they are able to run all of them they are able to to do whatever you want but the most important player in this position the way norway national team is playing is the playmaker here was sullivan now we will see sagosen this is the one that he is attacking the players and make one player more and then there is a realization they start from the playmaker that's the most important part of this see put two players together and make the chance for the left wing you can repeat this again once more, please. See, this section starts from us. Sullivan, they go on the right side. Next action starts from the Sagosen, they are going on the left side. Okay, let's go. And as a conclusion at the end of all these things, we can say, despite of all, individual skills are the most important. Individual skills make the difference. Imagination, in my way of thinking, is above all. And all top team, level teams and national teams, they need a strong person as a leader. As at all, individual makes a difference. If you don't have a leader 
in a team that is extremely big problem. And all the teams, they have leaders. Now I will show you four of them. They are the teams that are always in the top five, in the top five, top six of them. First, it's Domago Dumnyak from Croatia. Okay. Uh, with the set of this, please. Okay. With Omagoy, uh, I can be a little bit emotional because I know him from his childhood, and I was I'm really very good friend with his father. Domaga Dunjak is the player that is really the top level guy, the top level human being, and top level player. Uh, with 20, I mean, he was just over 20, he starts to play, he starts to play in the hardest league in Europe, in the Bundesliga. Now it's almost 10 years down there, voting from the MVP of the Bundesliga this year. Uh, with Hamburg Sportverein, won the European League. But what is more important, what is more important, he is the real leader of the Croatian national team. If you will compare the result of Croatian national team, you will see that all the time that the Dunjak was injured and we don't have it, we didn't have the result. How big is he? It shows not only way of playing in, in the attack, for, for me, it is more and more important how he reacts as a real leader when he is going to play in defense. This 5-1 in defense that he is playing is something, how he is moving, moving, and what he is doing is something exceptional. And uh, don't forget one thing, that usually now uh, the wings were shooters of the seven meters in the Croatian national team, Horvat, Šupić, uh, Starlek, and so on. In this position, in this championship, last championship, all the responsibility was on, on Domagoj. I still remember the last, the last uh, when the game with Norway was finished, and there was seven minutes for Croatia. If you score, there's draw, there's overtime. If you don't score, uh, we are losing the game. A year before, Zlatko Horvat was shooting the penalty, and we miss, we miss the finals of the World Championship. Dunjak take the responsibility, and he did it. And more important, as a coach of the women national team, we are very often in some kind of relations with the men national team. And I can see by the behavior during in a hotel, during the meals, during all the actions, what respect do we have from all the other players? Leader, exceptional one, really the one that makes very big difference for the European handball, especially for Croatian handball. Leave it now, leave it now, Kim Sunday Sagerson.
Okay. Stop now. Okay. Second thing we can talk about Sander Sagosen. Sander Sagosen is real leader of the Norway national team. Uh, don't forget that he is a young player, although it doesn't look so. Domagedunia is now 30 years old. Sander Sagosen is 25. And if you will come to the to the way of thinking that Norway national team start to play to make good results in the last four years. Oh, four years later. So that means from the position when he was 21 years old, he was somehow product to be a leader of the team. All the team of Norway, when I was talking with Jelko Thomas, the assistant coach of Norway national team, all the team of Norway was uh, built around their Sander Sagosen and built around Bjarne Mirhol. Sander Sagosen is the leader of the team, playing in attack, playing in defense, playing left back, playing. Uh, playmaker just here in PSG, and it will be it will be very very beautiful to see next year when he's going to play in Kiel together together with Dubnyak, how it looks like then two big players are going to play together. Leave it now. Uh, when we're talking about Mikael Hansen, uh, I call him killing machine. The clip that you were watching now, a few seconds ago, it is a clip from the game, game against Norway in the World Championship in Germany when he scored 14 goals in one game. He is really oriented to the goal. Uh, Denmark team without him is a totally different team, but uh, somehow uh, in my way, my way of handle, my way of thinking, I, I'm not so fond of him because all of three others, Sag even Sagosen, Sagosen, Dunyan, Karabatic, they are playing defense, they are playing attack, uh, they are perfect in balls in this way. Mikael Hansen is extremely good shooter, extremely good player in the attack, but he has not, he doesn't have this quality of playing in defense, and that makes him a little, little bit less in my eyes than than the other three. Let's go.
Uh, just to talk about, Mika, about uh, Nikola Karabatic, uh, although he is not so so in love with, with us in Croatia because uh, he and uh, Omeyer are the reasons that we didn't get uh, much more medals, gold medals, or the others. Nikola Karabatic, in my eyes, is uh, one of the best. At, at the one at some time even the best player in the world because uh, full of strength full of full of speed full of uh, wish and mental strength to play in attack to play in, in in the defense and he was ready always always to put the team in front of himself always to be the one who is going to do everything for the team i can please let us make once again the clip when he was jumping to the ball. Just please, you will see this section. This is Golden League. This is Golden League. Nothing special with preparation for the World Championship. There was a game against Denmark. And this time they were, they were winning with 10 goals when he is jumping to the ball and scoring the goal. That shows the leader. That shows somebody who is mentally prepared to do everything for his team. And not to be afraid of anything. This is the leader. When he is jumping this way, when he is fighting this way, all the others have to do it, or they cannot be in the same team. Now, give the back, please, Akim, to, to Kobe Bryant. And all of my philosophy of life and my philosophy of handball is here. Kobe Bryant said, I have nothing in common with lazy people who blame others for the lack of their success. Great thing comes only from hard work and perseverance. No excuses. This is my way of thinking in my in life. This is my way of thinking humbled. I like hard workers. I like somebody who is stubborn and who who want to do everything to be better from day to day, and at the same time, by being better individually, to be better as a team. I don't like the, the people who is always finding the excuses and who is always finding the reasons why they didn't success in somebody else. This showed their weakness. Thank you very much. This is all for me. Thank you, Nano. I hope that all of us enjoyed. And there is a few questions and I will also call the people who wants to make a question to send to Akim or to me in, in inbox. Uh, one of the first students on our academy was Daniel from Iran and I will call Akim now to connect Daniel to make his question. Daniel, please unmute your microphone. Is it okay now? Yeah. yeah. Hello, everyone. Thanks to all of the handball for all team, especially Dragan Jukic. Actually, I have a question that say, what should we do as a coach to make our sport more popular in our zone? This is my. Uh, unfortunately, this is not the question for the coaches. This is more question for the media and for the people that are working on TV or newspapers that are working even in the social medias. Uh, the only way what uh, you can do, the only way the coaches can do, is to work hard and to try to make the player to be the best that they can. But the social media, social media and media, TV, especially TV, especially, especially newspapers, they have to press you uh, to show that the handball is important part. On the other side, uh, you know, people are somehow connected with the results. If you have some kind of results, they, they will start to be more interested in you. I know this is this is the wrong wrong way of thinking. You know, they're always trying, I like to say, they're trying to, to sell the product and they don't have the factory. Uh, that's, they're asking you to make the results and then they give you then they give you some kind of popularity or something like this. It is a hard work. It's not, uh, again, only on us. Our job is just to work and to make our player the best. But uh, people in clubs, people in federations 
should think about this, how to make it better and better by, by working, as I told you, with social media, so with medias, and to try and put it on somehow better way. Because you can see now that even in Croatia, when the handball is, uh, by all the results, sport number one or two together with the football, when basketball has no results for a long period of time, we have to fight from day to day just to show how to be important. We have sports in our newspaper about sport from every day. The, there are the days that you will not find even one word about the handball, but you will find from second league in football or from seventh league in football you will find or from Taekwondo or something like this that is not important for people in Croatia. We have just, just we have to be stubborn. We have to be uh, on our path. We have to work hard and we have to try to be, make the best result as we can. Daniel, please unmute. Uh, yeah. Can I have another more? Yeah, yeah of course. And uh, what do you think about the future of handball with some technologies or maybe making some new rules? But I'm, I'm in, in, I like to, to be honest, I like to change the rules of handball because uh, as I told before when EVA had some of these webinars, I think that uh, people in international federation that are deciding about changing the rules, uh, somehow they are not so open like the other sports. The other sports make a big, big development by changing the rules. One of the rules that I will always like to change, we are talking about for a long period of time, is to make, is to make uh, this, that attack should least, I don't know, 35 seconds because some measurements make that usually even now, the attack is no longer than 35 seconds. Why? It's not a question about how to speed the game. It's a question about that we are taking away the strength from the referees. Because now referees, they decide how you, when you are going to shoot because of the rules. And the other thing, when we are talking about this, how to make more popular, handball will be more popular when the rules will be more simple. When all the people in the hall will exactly know what the referees whistle. When you are watching tennis, you know exactly it is in or out. When you are watching volleyball, you know exactly it is in or out on one more rules. Watching football, you know, it's offside, it's corner, foul or something like this. In handball, if you are going with your child to the, to the game, and when the guy in black or orange or something puts the hand up and start to make this counting, Half of the people in the, in the hall doesn't know what he's talking about. Because sometimes they said passive game is after 10 seconds, sometimes it is not after two minutes. This is one of the rules I would like, I would like to change a lot. We have to think maybe about the other, the other ways, but I think this, this one is one of the most important. Daniel, please mute. Okay, thank you, Akim, and thank you, my lecture. Thank you. Dragon. Okay, I have to say thank you for everyone of you who participate because uh, we choose the time, uh, five o'clock afternoon in Central Europe, what is the best for the people from Japan to follow us to Brazil because we are here from 20 countries from Japan, uh, Portugal, India, Brazil, France, Iran, Slovenia, Macedonia, Turkey, Serbia, United Kingdom, Jordan, Qatar, Kuwait, Holland, Switzerland, Montenegro, Croatia, of course, Israel, from really all over the world. Uh, I will invite you once again to be tomorrow at the same time with uh, Klaus Feldman and 10 handball commands. And I would like to say thank you, Neno, uh, in the name of all of us for sharing with us your handball philosophy. It was a pleasure to listen to this presentation and to enjoy this perfect clips, what really pictured your words. Thank you very much. Thank to all of you that were listening today. I hope that uh, you can see the way how I'm thinking about handball. Why do I love handball? And once again, I'm happy that the people that are here 
are the people that really like handball that are living not only from this sport, but they are living for this sport. Thank you very much.